So I heard an interesting question recently about why some autistic traits are the exact opposite of some others. Like, you know, so is it that autistic people are too much this or is it that they're too little this? And it really depends on the person. So in terms of what autism actually is, from my understanding of what I believe the current state of the science is, is it seems like autistic people have bonus connections in the brain. Uh, like when you're a, a very young, I believe a fetus, uh, your brain basically gets pruned like trimming a hedge and ours don't get pruned quite enough. And so you've got all these bonus connections, kind of like bodge wires or circuit bending. So um, as an example, uh, look at your senses. Uh, say you've got your sense of uh, vision here. So we hook up the eyes to the part of the brain that processes your vision. Okay, perfect. Everything's fine. Um, but if you're autistic, maybe, okay, what's going to happen now is uh, here's the uh, pathway connecting uh, your eyes to your vision we've done it twice now so it's twice as strong so now a beautiful sunny day is blinding and you need to get blackout curtains installed in order to not get a headache that's something that might happen uh, similarly you could take say uh, the signal you get from your ears uh, telling you uh, you know all the the sounds you're hearing that's supposed to go to the ears over here and again, we could have another second bonus connection there. Now the signal's too strong. Now everything just sounds far too loud and you've got to wear noise cancelling headphones everywhere. Or maybe uh, instead of hooking uh, the ears up to that part of your brain twice, you're going to hook it up to where your vision's supposed to go in. Now you've got synesthesia and you can see sounds. So I believe that's how that works. Um, now, it doesn't quite as well explain how uh, some people uh, don't hear or see things enough, uh, your hyposensitivities, uh, but that might be explained just by background noise. If you're patching like, you know, 10 different things into there, then that's a lot of background noise. You're not going to be able to hear the signal you're supposed to over the top of all the ones you're not. And this applies to all of your senses. Uh, there's uh, the five people kind of often know about and talk about where you've got your ability to hear, see, taste, touch and smell. Uh, although touch I think is really texture and also temperature. Uh, but there's also others, your vestibulary system, uh, the liquid in your ear that tells you which way up you are which can make car journeys difficult for some people, such as myself. If you close your eyes, you can tap your nose, that's proprioception. Uh, if you can tell when you're hungry or thirsty, that's interoception. And if you can feel in your body viscerally when you're having an emotion, uh, I believe that's probably an extension of interoception, uh, which is just not having uh, effective alexithymia. So I don't think you know, we even really have a word for that one. It's just feeling emotions, feelings. <laughs> Um, if you're autistic, any of these uh, sensory inputs might be too weak or too strong. And it's not like there's a vague chance of it. There's a very high likelihood. Um, when you're not autistic, uh, known as allistic, uh, then all your dials are all set perfectly. Everything's at the 12 o'clock position, all that the nice indent at the top. Everything's all fine. Uh, but if you're autistic, they're just going to be all over the place. You just your sensitivity is all going to be all too low, too high. It's really the luck of the draw, which senses you get too much of or too little of or just right. Whereas I gather for most allistic people, they're pretty much all perfect, spot on, no complaints. And that's why a lot of us have to say wear sunglasses or earplugs or noise cancelling headphones pretty much everywhere because everything's way too overwhelming. Now, the way I understand it, uh, the human brain is modular. And so each uh, sense you uh, have as an input gets kind of uh, processed in some way and then passed along to the next part of your brain that does more abstract things with it. So, for instance, say your vision itself is uh, too strong a signal. That means everything's too bright and uh, a nice sunny day is going to give you a headache unless you're wearing sunglasses or better yet, staying at home indoors uh, with uh, blackout curtains drawn. 
but you could say have that just spot on just fine uh, but then the next layer of abstractions uh, too high in which case maybe just seeing clutter everywhere is going to be overwhelming because the part of your brain which is looking at the, the pictures from the previous part and identifying all the objects in them maybe that one's getting too strong a signal and getting easily overwhelmed so there's different layers of abstraction where this can cause problems uh, for example, uh, you could uh, hear really well, uh, everything sounds too loud, you need to wear noise cancelling headphones, but at the same time uh, you can't hear people speak all that well because the part of your brain that specifically uh, converts sounds into speech uh, is not getting any help in that department. You're, I think the way it works for most people is if someone's talking to them, they can kind of automatically lower the background sounds. I would need a holistic person to verify this for me. But it sounds like most people can just hear each other fine, even in a noisy environment. Whereas for some of us, that's not really possible. You just hear the noisy environment and a, a few bits of kind of muffled speech, uh, catawampus, isn't it? Uh, muffled speech kind of getting through, which is known as auditory processing disorder, where you can hear everything just fine, too fine quite often, uh, but in terms of trying to work out translating the sounds into speech, that's difficult because of the signal to noise ratio. So even when things are basically um, not necessarily failing, but just you know really struggling to cope, uh, it might be happening at different layers of abstraction. So um, basically, if you're all listic, all these dials at the 12 o'clock center position, they're all dialed in just fine uh, but if you're autistic each one could be set anywhere and it's just the luck of the draw how you're born and the thing that you have to bear in mind is that um, it's not like there's a slight likelihood of this it is very probable that you're going to have a bunch of senses to diminish the bunch of senses cranked up way too much and um, for example um, I hear things pretty loud I think because when I use noise cancelling headphones it's such a relief uh, but I can't hear people talking all that well oftentimes, so I need to ask them to repeat themselves too much and they ask if I'm going deaf. No, I can hear things too well, that's the problem for me. But at the same time, I can't decipher the speech all that easily all the time. So I'm pretty sure my hearing is slightly at least hypersensitive, but when it comes to, say, my interoception, knowing when I need to eat or drink, I don't really realise I'm hungry or thirsty until it's too late. I've probably spent most of my life slightly dehydrated, at least. Um, so my interoception is really kind of uh, too weak a signal. And similarly, uh, for possibly the same reasons, because I think emotions are probably built on top of interoception, um, I don't feel my own emotions, really, so that doesn't help that makes things very difficult. But then I know other autistic people who can be the exact opposite. I know someone who feels emotions better than anyone else. And to me, it's like, whoa, it's like you're really, really non-autistic. And they're like, no, trust me, autistic people say that I'm just as kind of far from the bell curve as you are, but in the opposite direction. So opposites can both be symptoms here. It's not about whether you feel something uh, specifically too strongly or too weakly, both are signs, it's that your dial's just randomly set rather than all centre position. It's not exactly where you are on the bell curve, it's that you're not bang on the centre. It's that each of your senses, you're either in a small minority of people who's got it far too weak or probably a small minority of people who's got it far too strong. But it's very lucky if you've got any of them in between that where most people have it. So it becomes one of those things where um, it seems like uh, what are the chances that I have this issue and this issue and this issue and it's like well if you're autistic then quite high indeed you're probably going to have multiple kind of small disabilities here that add up so from my understanding that's what it is and how it works and that's how two people with the same neurotype can have complete opposite traits uh, both of which, in either direction, it hints that you might be of that neurotype in the first place. It's a neurotype of extremes uh, and just being away from the middle of the bell curve in either direction. Thank you very much to all of my patrons for supporting me making these videos and my music and uh, comic I'm making with Mono Salabo. Um, why not join them, please? Uh, go to patreon.com slash zoeblademusic today. I also make music.